Oh, this is exciting, Steve. How you doing? We're live again. We are live. Do you know what we're doing differently this time? What's that? We're on Twitter, too. We are? Yeah. LinkedIn, YouTube, and Twitter all at once. I like it. All right. What are we talking about? So today we're back again. We're going to review another how to select a DXP guide. And today we have Progress Site Finity's guide to selecting a DXP. So we're going to speed this up as last time was a little bit like 30 minutes. Well, you know, when we get going, we can get going. Exactly. And, and this guide's a little bit more uh, robust in nature. But what we'll do is we'll just show a couple of different sections so that you can go back and download it at a different time. Cool. And I'm going to just change that. So let's get into it. So again, this guide's a little bit more... Um, of a mature guide that we would typically see from large and enterprise solution vendors and system integrators well, out in the market. You know what I thought about this guide is that it was less about how to pick a DXP and more about how to go through any sort of software procurement process. One hundred percent. This it, is it the... did not give me <laughs> what I was hoping for yes. from a here are the features and the considerations that you don't want to forget about as you go through your own. I mean, you're only going to be going through and considering this if you already have a bit of a procurement process. Correct. So, but I think there's some nuggets in here. Would you agree? I, I would. Uh, again, there's quite a bit if we go into the detail of it, which we're not because we want people to download it for the author's sake. Um, we do. But we'll look at the slide. And as the number one here is like build the requirements. Again, every single one of these is going to say build the requirements. But what I will say is if you look at number three there, where it says agree whether you need an agency partner to help with the implementation, that's where I kind of go off the road <laughs> here a little. And I go, wait a second, you're about to build the business case for the investment, but you're probably not sure what you need. Right. Well, <laughs> you probably are sure what you need. You're probably wrong. Most organizations that I talk to, if they're looking to select a DXP yeah. and they don't have a vendor in mind, they need to shortlist and you say, what are your requirements? And yeah. you ask them the roadmap. Yeah. They don't have one. Yeah. They don't have a strategic process. Or they, or what they have, they think they have one, but we've made. It's Lucy. We, we made It's Lucy disagree. Goosey. <laughs> right. It's Lucy Goosey. And they're either very technical We've requirements. we half of our audience. I that's okay. <laughs> not to be me. But it's very technical requirements. It could be very functional in, in the process. Or it's the other side where it's the gold sticker statue. This is what I'm trying to achieve. Right. right? Yeah, and the, the yeah, practicality the in yeah. the beginning, <laughs> it's not really meant for the people who have to do the job. Right. So... What I'm looking at, I would say almost number one should be, do you need an analyst or an agency yeah, partner do you that need knows? Some that should be number one. Yeah. I actually think that should be number one. And, and maybe like the question isn't, do you need one? It is, to what extent do you need one? I mean, we're biased exactly. here, but you know, if you bring in a good partner, uh, you're going to get value. Okay. All right. Yeah. It sounds like we're doing our own sales pitch here, which wasn't the intention. So move on. Exactly. Well, and again, define the DXP internal requirements and then whether you need an agency or not. The fourth one here is the one that uh, when you dig deep into this uh, guide, you'll notice they kind of change the tune. But right here, it says circulate request for information document to the list of vendors. But when you dig into the actual information they have within this uh, white paper. It, oh, I missed that. They're doing an RFI and then an RFP. Yeah. So we here's need to talk to somebody. Here's what I'm going to say as somebody who's done this for years. And again, if you read into it, they do a better job when you actually look into um, when you read the, the section. Okay. But what it says right here is. 
put out your request for information to the vendors you're considering by looking at G2 Crowd, Gartner, Forrester, mm. other agencies you might know, some information, and send out that RFI. I can tell you the bigger vendors and the larger integration partners like ourselves will just ignore it. Or they'll, they'll, they'll just give you back what you want to hear at that point. Oh, there's no value. So if you, there's a laundry list yeah. of things we have to fill out, like if we have to start, do you, does this, does, yeah. does the we'll platform find, have yeah. this? Does the platform have this? And it's going to take me right. a week to do this. No, unless you're now the caveat is, is if you're like a fortune 500, like Sony, you know, Pepsi, any of these, they, that's their procurement rule. But I'm saying for the average company under 250 million, you're not, nobody's going to respond to you. So I do not like this one right. in particular. Yourself? Okay. Okay. What do you think? Yeah, no. No. <laughs> and then deciding the short list of vendors is another interesting observation of how they get to it. I'm a pretty straightforward person. I'm looking at what is your team, what are their skill sets mm -hmm. as opposed to what is, what does the vendor have for features? Because most of the vendors, most of the mature vendors have everything. Right. But what would you say is like, do you think the short list, um, how, how would you say getting to the short list? Would you say from the agency perspective, it's more what is that agency using that there? Well, this is where I think the partner that you bring in to support the process is going to add a lot of value. They're going to immediately be able to look at the, well, they're going to help you to find those requirements or look at the list that you've got and be able to narrow that down without ne you needing to do a cattle call and get your RFI filled out and have everybody give you back something that it's hard to compare or gives you the answer that they think you want to hear anyway. So um, uh, understanding the business case and the use cases, uh, anybody in our industry who's, you know, like us, who's been doing it forever is going to, going to look at that and go, oh, wait a minute, you should consider X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Uh, I Absolutely. <laughs> that's, and that's your short list. <laughs> there's your short list. And then you go deep. Yeah. Now, you know, once you get past the short list, I've, I've helped. Uh, I can't imagine how many, I, I don't know. I'm over 50 for building out requests for proposals. And sorry the, about that. Uh, when I'm building on an RFP with a customer, the first, the, the first statement I make to the customer that I'm working with, put a number. You know, like a put budget. It, a budget yeah, in there. Right. Yeah. Well, it how, is, how big is this thing? Yeah. Because if you think you are going to get a response from the vendor or implementation partner or agency you're working with, and there's no number, no nothing, and it's blind, mm -hmm. you're not going to get a response. Right. I can tell you if you put your budget, and it could be a range. In the RFP, yeah, I'll almost guarantee you right now you will get a response. Uh, right, yeah, and mm -hmm. and and it 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 seems counterintuitive, I think, to a lot of clients and or procurement people that that's going to lead to people maximize like trying to push your butt. Well, actually, the counter it's counterintuitive, but what you'll find is the vendor, the solution provider that wants to maximize that budget. Okay, well, here's everything we can pack into that budget yeah. for you. And then you can say, well, actually, I don't think we need some of those things. Could we, could, we, could we eliminate some of them and drop our budget by 10%? Well, yeah, sure. <laughs> that, it, it's incredible how often, because you need to be able to compare apples to but apples. But it's not about budget. That's the worst word in the industry. It's, it's the, it, there's gotta be an it's, economic value here. There's yeah. gotta be, Something that's going to deliver on, you know, increased revenue or lower costs or something like that. Um, that's how you should be measuring and, and positioning the business case for the for it. Not, you know, uh, yeah. So again, when I've told customers to put the budget in, is to compare apples to apples with vendors and right. partners. Right. So when we go into a room and we know what the budget is and we know we're against another agency. 
what are we bringing to the table that they're not based on that budget? Right. The worst thing you can do is say, nobody knows the budget. And we're now this other agency is saying, well, we'll throw everything in, in the kitchen sink. Right. Now here's our budget. And then they throw out a number that's three times bigger than ours, but they may be giving more, they may be giving less. So this is just the first way of comparing apples to apples. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, just moving on, when we're looking at evaluating the short list of ven- vendors, I'm a huge proponent of saying you need to have something in front of the key stakeholder group and that it's a joint decision between the people who are having to manage mm-hmm. and operate the software. So you kind of go through some sort of Ab- distillation process or, once. you know, you, yes. you somehow package this up for a broader sort of executive uh, it- consideration. Exactly. And one area that I like on this is they've actually considered this in the, um, they have a scoring matrix and I would definitely now ours, ours is way more robust. I've got over a thousand data points that I work with. We give you the Excel template and it's got all the, (laughs) all the formulas in it. It's not, (laughs) I'm so yes, good job props for the list and the criteria. Yeah. But the the great opportunity here is to just make sure that you have some consensus internally because a lot of times you're getting a lot, the C-suite will just look at, okay, what am I not going to get in trouble for for buying? Meanwhile, you've got people that are using it. Oh, I mean, I'd like to think that, 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 that our customers and clients are more <laughs> sophisticated than that, but I get where you're coming from. Exactly. If there's any way that you can at least improve the bias of what the users, the day in day business units, oh, I see. You, that you need think to that use like, it. Yeah, I think this is a better because it can be taken into consideration. So, sure, sure. It helps you weight the the requirements and features. And, yeah, yeah, right. And right. the other piece, it of, takes a little bit of the like, ooh, flashy uh, appeal away. Yeah, yeah. Now, this scoring matrix, is it's very simple, which is okay. Um, when we're doing ours, it's a little bit more robust and a little bit more specific because what we want to do is also when they're going through any of these demos or they're going through like seeing the the actual product in, in use in a demo, maybe right. having a sandbox, working with the integration partner, knowing what they're going to do, this keeps them... On top of, oh, I have to ask about SEO. How do you improve so, SEO? Yeah, and, and like I, I like this part of it because it really keeps everybody on their toes of what they should be looking for instead of being sold right, on right. these amazing new pieces. Right. Um, and I, I think we make the point in our guide as well that this is just guidance. Yes. This does not mean you need to check for any of these features. And doesn't mean that you don't augment this list with what's important to you that's exactly. not here as well. Um, so, you know, take it with a grain of salt and make sure you adjust it. It does not say, oh, you have to look for all these things because it's the only way to do it. 100%. So I think that's it. There Scott. you go. That's it. Yeah. We uh, appreciate it. If you Listen, want. Hold on, hold on. I, I feel like this one got a little bit too much flack. Like it is a good guide. It has a good process in it. Yes. It's, it outlines a good solid square procurement process that does apply to a digital experience platform. I just think it falls a little short on some of the specifics and considerations of what you want to be um, looking for and how you want to be going about evaluating those things. Uh, I, you summed it up correctly. It is evaluating software right. in general. Like right. This is what we would typically see in the market yep. versus what it is. Um, but if you do want to download this white paper, which is by far, like, there's a lot of work and effort that went into it. Yeah, it's Um, pretty extensive. Here's the link. Just go ahead. (laughs) And again, thank you for coming. If you want to see our white paper, um, which has a shorter link, it is a much shorter (laughs) link, but it's actually longer. Funny enough, we're longer by like three pages. Um, Please just do a few title page. (laughs) (laughs) That's exactly it. Um, Just go ahead and download and we look forward to having you again. Thanks everybody. Thank you.
The button's over there. I got the button. All right.